Welcome back. So we've been talking about the fast Fourier transform and how you can use this to uh, compute the Fourier transform on vectors of data. Uh, and you can use this to denoise data, analyze data, also to approximate the derivatives of data numerically. And today we're gonna talk about how to use the FFT uh, to solve, oh, the FFT to solve partial differential equations. FFT for PDEs. Okay, and we're going to do this uh, numerically. And so what I'm gonna walk through here are a couple of examples, the heat equation, uh, the one-way wave equation, and Berger's equation. And we're gonna see how we can uh, code up and simulate these partial differential equations using the fast Fourier transform to approximate the derivatives. Okay, so we're gonna start with the heat equation. And I just wanna remind you, uh, the heat equation is UT, equals alpha squared uxx. This is the one-dimensional heat equation uh, where u is a temperature, t is time, and x is space. So maybe I'll write that out. Uh, u is a function of x and t. And I'll just label these. Uh, this is my temperature. x is space, a spatial variable, and t is time. And what we're going to do is we're going to Fourier transform this. So we're gonna take the FFT and we're gonna get some U hat of now kappa and time. So this is still a function of time, but now kappa is a spatial, uh, a spatial frequency or a wave number. Sometimes I call this omega, uh, sometimes I call it kappa, um, but I try to remember to use kappa when I'm doing the Fourier transform with respect to x. So here we're Fourier transforming the x variable space, and instead we're replacing x with these spatial wave numbers kappa, okay? And the key observation here is that if I have derivatives like ux or uxx, then when we Fourier transform these, uh, what we get is this ux derivative becomes the complex number i times kappa times u hat, if I take another derivative, that's just I squared kappa squared uh, u hat, which is minus kappa squared u hat. So it's easy to compute derivatives uh, in space, in this case, just by Fourier transforming and multiplying by, by kappa or kappa squared. Okay. Now this is, we've already seen this before, but when we do this with the fast Fourier transform, now this u hat is a vector of Fourier coefficients. U would be a vector of data at each spatial location, and u hat is a vector of Fourier coefficients. And kappa and kappa squared are vectors of frequencies. So now what we get is something like minus uh, kappa one squared u hat one, the first component of u hat, kappa two squared u two hat, and so on and so forth down to kappa n squared u n hat, the nth component. So this is, again, a vector um, of the product of kappa squared times, uh, times u hat. And once you take this vector and inverse Fourier transform, you would recover, in this case, the second derivative of u. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use this kind of formulation to approximate first and second derivatives, and we're gonna use that to solve this PDE uh, in MATLAB uh, using, using ODE45, and we'll use uh, ODE int in, in Python. Okay, so we'll solve it in MATLAB and in Python. And here, I'm just gonna Fourier transform the equations, and what we get, uh, is u hat, this is still a function of, of time, so I can still take its time derivative, so u hat derivative equals minus uh, alpha squared kappa squared u hat, okay? And the thing to remember here is that u hat is a function of kappa and time, so for every single kappa, there's a discrete set of n kappas. For each of these kappas, this is just an ordinary differential equation in u hat at that particular kappa. Okay, this is just an ordinary differential equation, u hat dot equals some constant times u hat, and we know the solution of that. It's, you know, e to the lambda t, where this is this is lambda. And so we can solve this, uh, this, this differential equation using ODE 45, or we could even do this analytically. Uh, and so that's gonna be really useful, okay? So this um, is essentially a 
decoupled, so that's also really nice, is that for every kappa, this is a single one-dimensional ODE. So I get n ODEs, so I have n decoupled uh, ODEs, one for each, uh, each of these kappas, okay? So for each of these kappa j's, let's say, I have one ordinary dif differential equation I have to solve. Okay, good. So what we're going to do is we're going to code this up uh, and we're going to, to simulate this essentially using just a regular ODE solver uh, using the fast Fourier transform to approximate the derivative. And then we're going to try this out for the one-way wave equation and also for Berger's equation. Okay, so let's, let's start that out. Okay, so you can download all of this code uh, at databookuw.com. It's all there. It's also on GitHub now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start. Um, I'm just going to walk you through this code. What we're going to start by doing is defining some domain uh, over which we're going to define this PDE. So in this case, uh, we're defining a domain with length 100 from minus 50 to 50. Uh, and I'm going to have a thousand points in that that domain, so that'll that'll set up a certain delta x. Okay, so this is just setting up the problem. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to define this vector kappa uh, of discrete wave numbers. So there's going to be a thousand of those kappas, uh, and this is this is just how I always remember to do it in MATLAB. This is kind of a pain. Um, but you're gonna you're gonna just either copy this out or Google it or whatever. We have this basic. Uh, this basic frequency, given our domain of length L, the basic frequency is 2 pi over L. And then you imagine that those wave numbers, you'd have 2 pi over L times 0, times 1, times 2, times 3, all the way up to N. And those would be all of your discrete frequencies. And so here we create this vector from minus N halves to N halves minus 1. You multiply all of that, that array of frequencies uh, or of integers times this basic frequency. And then you run that through this FFT shift command in MATLAB, which reorganizes those, those wave numbers to be in the right order so that each, uh, you know, kappa 1 is the wave number corresponding to the first entry of the Fourier transform. Kappa 2 corresponds to the second entry and so on and so forth. So this just makes sure that your kappas have the right order so that when you multiply them by your Fourier transform, uh, it's an apples to apples comparison. Okay, and this is just kind of, I think, a um, kind of a remnant of the fact that lots of computer languages uh, set up their, their wave numbers differently. And so, you know, this is probably how some old programming language used to set them up. And so if you copy your code, you have to run this FFT shift uh, kappa command. Okay, not a big deal. You'll remember this uh, next time you see it. Okay, so we've set up the domain. We've defined our discrete wave numbers. Here we're going to define the initial condition. Uh, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a top hat function. Okay, so our initial temperature distribution is going to be zero, then it's gonna to go to one, then it's gonna go back down to zero. And we know how the Fourier transform of this is, gonna, is going to evolve in time. What's gonna happen is immediately the high frequency corners are going to diffuse out and round out. And then very rapidly after this starts to round out, um, after a while, it will start to diffuse more and more and more into this kind of uh, diffusing Gaussian profile. Okay, so that's what we expect to happen from the analytic Fourier transform solution, uh, and we're going to see if that happens when we simulate this. Okay, so all of the magic in this code, everything, almost all of the code is just initialization and plotting. The real guts of the code are here in line 18. This is where all of the, the simulation is happening using ODE45, okay? So what we do is we're basically solving this equation here in ODE45, okay? So I have a vector state U hat. U hat is the state of my system at each time. And for each element of u hat, for each kappa, right, it's, it's a, uh, a vector of kappas, for each element of this u hat vector, this is my ordinary differential equation for that, uh, for that, that row or that kappa. And these are all decoupled uh, differential equations, so, so each one only depends on its own kappa. 
And so what I'm gonna do is define this right-hand side heat is gonna be this right-hand side of the heat equation. And it's gonna have uh, four arguments. It's gonna be a function of time. It's gonna be a function of the state U hat, the thing where we're integrating uh, the state of our, our ODE. And also a function of kappa and alpha, kappa and alpha here. And in MATLAB, ODE45 is expecting uh, a function, a vector field that's just a function of time and your state, t and u hat. And so this at t comma u hat, what that does is that creates on the fly a function with just those two input variables by taking this function with four variables and locking in that specific kappa and alpha that were defined uh, up above in the function. Okay, so it's a little bit convoluted, but all we're doing here is we're taking our right-hand side function that we've defined as a function of four variables. We're locking in kappa and alpha. That forces it to be only a function of the two variables that ODE45 is expecting this function to have. And then you also give it a, a vector of times t to integrate over and an initial condition. And remember what we do is we take our initial condition u naught in space, and then we Fourier transform that initial condition to get an initial uh, set of Fourier modes. Okay, so that's all that we're doing here. Um, I will show you this right-hand side heat. Okay, so this is my, my right-hand side for the heat equation in Fourier transform. Uh, and what we do is essentially just code up this right-hand side here. So u hat is a big vector of Fourier coefficients. Kappa is a big vector of these frequencies, kappa one, kappa two, and so on. And my, the, the time derivative of u hat, du hat dt, is minus alpha squared times kappa squared times u hat. That's, you know, minus alpha squared times kappa squared times u hat. And because kappa is a vector and u hat is a vector, we're doing uh, dot squared and dot times u hat, and that does this element-wise uh, squaring and product. Okay, so all we've done here is we Fourier transformed our PDE, we now get a system of n coupled ordinary differential equations, one for each kappa uh, in this, this vector of kappas. We build this right-hand side uh, in the Fourier domain, and we pass this right-hand side to ODE45, and it steps this u hat forward in time as if it was a big system of ordinary differential equations. And it's nice because these are decoupled ordinary differential equations. This is a diagonal system of ordinary differential equations. Okay, so that's really nice. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our code here, uh, and now I'm just going to run this. Okay, so it's running. Uh, and in lines 20 through 22, all that I'm doing here is I'm taking my solution at each uh, snapshot in time, and I'm inverse Fourier transforming it so I can plot it for you. Okay, so essentially what we're doing is we are taking our, our PDE, we're taking our initial condition u naught, we're FFTing it, we're simulating this whole system in the Fourier domain. So we're walking this forward using ODE45 in the Fourier transform domain. We're literally integrating u hat forward in time. And then once we have our solution in time, we can inverse Fourier transform and figure out what was our solution in space for each point in time. Okay, and now I'm just gonna show you how to plot this. Uh, I like this waterfall plot because I think this looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you how to plot this in a waterfall. Okay, so this is the solution uh, in space and in time, starting with this uh, top hat function. And it looks very, very similar to what you expect. Okay, so what we have here is, uh, you can kind of rotate this thing around, and what you see is that this is very much like what you would expect. You start with this, uh, this sharp-edged top hat function, and very quickly these, uh, these corners diffuse out, so those are high-frequency uh, corners. Corners have a lot of high-frequency content. Those diffuse out and round out, and then over time you get this kind of uh, smooth diffusion, um, this kind of convolution with a Gaussian, kernel that gives you the smooth uh, diffusion of the heat profile as time evolves, okay? So that's exactly what we expect from the analytic solution, from the physics of the problem. Here we're solving it purely with uh, ODE45 in the Fourier transform domain. So that's really cool. Uh, and I just want to remind you that, you know, each of these u hats contains the frequency component. So the, the first u hat is the lowest frequency, the next lowest, the next lowest, and then higher and higher and higher, all the way up to the highest frequency component. And so what you can see here, just from this Fourier transform equation, is that the larger kappa is, the higher frequency components will essentially die out faster. 
Okay, so this is kind of the eigenvalue, and the solution would be e to the lambda t. This is a bigger decay constant when kappa is larger. So my higher frequency modes are going to die out faster, my low frequency modes are gonna stick around for longer. And that's exactly what we see here, is that these corners have a lot of high frequency content. Those die out very, very fast in time. And then the low frequency, big, broad structures stick around for a long time, because they have a lower uh, decay constant. Okay, so you clearly see that uh, in the physics, you also see that in the simulation. So this is really nice. We're, we're kind of very efficiently and accurately simulating these derivatives by working in the Fourier domain where we can solve the system as if it was a system of decoupled ODEs. Okay? Uh, and then the other plot I like to show is just a movie. So what I'm going to do is instead of plotting the waterfall, we're just going to plot each frame of this as a movie evolving in time. So you can see kind of the diffusion occurring in time. I'll run that one more time for you. Okay, so you start with your top hat and then you see very rapidly the profile decaying in time. Okay, so again, you see that even within the first frame, this very high frequency corner gets rounded out and then it takes a lot more time for the other frequencies to start to decay out. Okay, good. So in the next few videos, I'll walk you through a couple of other PDEs. We'll look at the uh, one-way wave equation and the Burgers equation, and we'll see how we can solve those in the Fourier domain uh, using, using this here. Okay, thank you.